Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Danny Le. I'm a librarian here at the Santa Clara City Library, and I am so excited to have our guest today. Uh, Matt Stoney is a competitive eater, world record holder, and YouTuber born and raised in San Jose, California. Since 2010, Matt has competed in numerous competitive eating contests all across the country, most notably for the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, which in 2015, we won first place. Over the years, he has broken new world records for eating and garnered a following of over 14 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, where he combines popular culture, food, and community engagement into a spectacle of intense challenge and pure entertainment. Welcome, Matt. What's up, my man? Yeah, what an intro, man. Thank you, dude. Great to, great to be doing this interview. Um, yeah, no, great to meet you, man. Thank you, man. And I wrote that, so I had to make sure it, it came correct. Um, so first of all, how are you doing during this pandemic? And, you know, where are you calling from, brother? Um, yeah, I mean, I know this is, you know, Santa Clara, you know, the Bay Area, kind of an interview. I recently made, as many have, uh, the, 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 the migration out of state. I, I recently moved out to Vegas. It was a space issue. I, I miss the nice weather. I miss the vibe and everything. There's not as many trees here. No redwoods at all, but... Um, no, I mean, um, yeah, I recently moved out to Vegas for calling from from Nevada, but um, dude, dude, been doing fine. I mean, you know, the pandemic's, you know, it's, it's a tough situation for most people. Fortunately for me, you know, being a YouTuber and stuff, I was able to continue, you know, the regular kind of operation for the most part out of my kitchen. But it's been a, it's been, it's definitely been an interesting couple of years because I mean, contests and stuff. I haven't been really on the circuit, and it's a been, it's been different for me. But I'm not complaining, you know. I'm chugging along and do my thing, so. That's one of the big things I, uh, I know for a lot of people who are kind of public facing, um, the pandemic shut down all activities, really, you know, yeah. from artists, musicians, and uh, folks like you who compete and travel, right? But I think you've been doing good for yourself. Uh, I've been following your channel, very entertaining, it makes me chuckle and also cringe because I can't shove all that food down my throat. Sure. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, especially your, uh, um squid game one was uh oh, okay it made me cry because you all you know you took all that time to cook uh that big cookie sure and little movements shattered everything little moment yeah well not to spoil anything but we have round two coming i, I had to get round two so we're getting a second shot at that <laughs> coming up so you said uh you know you grew up in san Jose, and you know we're proud to know that you've grown up here but can you talk about you know, a little bit about your childhood before all the competitions and, uh, you know, the notoriety. How was your uh, childhood um, growing up? And did you have aspirations beyond that weren't a part of this food uh, competing, competitive world? Hmm. That's tough. I mean, it seems like forever ago, you know, but I mean, no, I mean, like I vividly remember, um, actually just minor correction i know at the, at the top born and raised i was actually born in san francisco um <laughs> i lived the first five years of my life in san francisco i don't remember a minute of it but um yeah no, I, I vividly remember when we moved out uh, my, my parents moved out to san jose and stuff um you know it was like apple oh, apricot orchards and stuff over there in the east east san jose and it was crazily different and just growing up on nes uh, nintendo 64 and all that stuff yeah i mean part like man i i I just remember playing lots of different sports, uh, baseball, soccer, basketball, like, you know, just like, you know, little kid stuff and everything. I didn't really pick up into a stride of anything. I think the biggest thing I really committed to was playing the guitar back when, mm. when I, when I was in middle school at Shibuya. Um, yeah. Just, just picking up the guitar was something that I wanted to do. It wasn't like, just like that. Hey, that thing you do on Saturday or something. Right. I was like, I want to get good at this. And, uh, you know, to this day, I don't play as much as I'd like to, but I took that pretty passionately. I tennis too back in the day, playing, uh, playing at the college, at the public courts and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's tough because obviously nothing back then was nearly as focused as I am now with the YouTube and competitive eating. So when I look back at that, it seemed like hobby mentality to me. But no, I definitely, I was always a committed type of person. I was like t taking things that I did seriously and um yeah, I don't know what brought that about, but um, it, it was a great place to live, San Jose, being so diverse, so many opportunities. It's such a, you know, gave a good worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I like how the positioning of your guitar right there. So it showed yeah. you, you did, <laughs> you did play music at a time. Um, but I'm in, a temp I'm, I'm, at, I'm, I'm in an apartment. We're still in the process. So a little, it's like the best artwork I have. <laughs> We're still moving out. Everything's in boxes. So, um, so. And the thing is, your career in terms of uh, competitive eating was almost, you know, a decade plus 
now. But that was, I guess you began it when you're, you're in your teens, right? Like yeah. maybe straight out of high school, really? Um, yeah, well, so the first thing I ever did, the first challenge I ever did is because I saw the Man vs. Food when um, Adam Richmond went to Iguana's downtown, Joey popped out, ate the five pound burrito zilla. So the first challenge I ever did, I don't remember the exact date or year precisely. I'm pretty sure it was 2019, I was 17. And um, yeah, Burrito Zilla, they opened, Iguana's opened, they were branching out. They opened one in the Evergreen. Shout out, shout out to Iguana's. Let's go, baby. Uh, um, but um, yeah, no, so I did the Burrito Zilla five pound guy. I think it took me three attempts to finish it. Eventually I finished that. And then there was also, it, it, there was like um, Baskin Robbins. They had like a tornado challenge uh, Sunday. But um, no, I really, that wasn't, I did those out of hobby. Those weren't like competitive eating serious stuff. It wasn't until 2010 when I was 18, when I was old enough to sign up for competitions and do certain events that um, I did a contest. Like I said, I family on the East coast. The first contest I did was a lobster eating championship. A thousand dollars, the first place I ended up winning the event, walking out, walking out with a thousand dollars cash. Like this is sick. So then I started doing food challenges a lot up and down California, SoCal Bay area and stuff. Actually, I had a really good contest up in Antioch too. That was fun to do every year. But um, yeah, no, it, it, there was never really a point where I was like specifically like, I'm just going to just go all in for this. You know, yeah. after doing it, I was at Mission College for many, many years. I meant not many, many, but you know, like maybe two, two and a half years, I think. And I was juggling doing the professional events and the contest, the YouTube and stuff with college. Um, so there's never like a, but I started when I was 18 years old. Did, uh, I mean, you travel sounds like you traveled a lot and did these uh events but um did your immediate family felt like what's what's matt doing you know <laughs> or were they supportive you know of this they were oddly supportive like it, it wasn't like um they weren't like i know they, they, they were a support retrospectively they were the a perfect recipe of support like they weren't mm. like literally like oh yeah we're gonna just buy you all your camera gear. We're not going to fly you out. To, no, no, I was, I was, it was on my dime, you know, for the most part, I borrowed my dad's camera until I bought my own. And uh, so, but they were, they were cool. As long as I was still doing school, as long as I was still, you know, my grades weren't flunking out or doing anything. Right. No, they were, they were, cause I, I think, um, I think they just saw that I was taking it seriously to some aspect. And then of course, you know, doing events and, you know, around the country is kind of cool. So, um, no, they were, they were super supportive. My grandparents too. They're, they're always, my grandparents were at my first couple contests that I came that I did. So, uh, I, I was definitely supportive for sure. Um, you know, not to say during that time when, you know, especially a young person's life, especially when, uh, making your name, uh, out yeah. there in the world, the notoriety and, um, maybe the prize money or even just winning, uh, help drive to further competitions or was it more of a check because this is not a uh, type of competition many people enter you know yeah, yeah. and you found out that you're I'm not that bad at it you know I'm pretty good so sure. what drove you even further you know into farther reaches and places that you never even visited you know uh, I mean yeah I mean I've tried, I'm not tried, but I, you know, I've attempted to psychoanalyze that whole situation a little bit and everything because people ask me that question. I try to, you know, give as best, the best advice right. that I can. Cause I'm not going to tell people to, you know, just go down to your local burrito, go down to Guanas and need a five pound burrito right now. You're going to do things, you know? Um, no, I, I think, you know, for me, it was this realistic juggle between something that I enjoyed doing and something that like, it was always on, like, when I started getting into it, like, it was on my mind. Like, I just wanted to do things. Like, I could just, you could just feel that. Like, I, I use the example, like, competitive eating is very much like bodybuilding. It's just like you're training a few select muscles to do something crazy and, you know, lift or whatever. I could never go and just, like, destroy, like, lift crazy. Like, I, it would just feel off to me. I'd feel like I'm, like, blowing up my biceps or something. But for some reason, just, you know, the, the, the esophagus, the stomach, just the jaw training and everything, it just, I was able to push through the pain. I was able to be happy to do difficult things. And I leaned into it. I think something that I learned, like I said, I played tennis pretty early on. I found out in high school that I was never going to be like a great tennis player because, you know, you'd meet kids that started when they're four years old and they're, they're 12, I'm 17 and they're kicking, you know, they're a little dude killing me. <laughs> so I, but what the lesson I took from that was like, you have to, if you, if you really want to go somewhere with something, you kind of have to find it and go for it you know if you can if you can connect the two dots something that's going to 
that you like doing and that you're actually good at doing, you can connect those two dots, then you gotta, you gotta run with it. So um, I think I, I sense that, you know, with, um, with the competitive eating, it was the adrenaline of being on stage, the, the motivation to try to beat the people next to you and push through the, the pain, the, the discomfort and all that stuff. Um, and, and also, you know, kind of mixed too with the YouTube, which I'll get to is like the fact that you're entertaining people. Mm-hmm. You go on stage, people are cheering for you to not boot. Well, maybe, maybe sometimes, but you know, they're not booing for you. Right? You're making people happy for the most part. And for YouTube, it was kind of the same thing, like creating the content, like putting my favorite songs behind things that I did and seeing people like, hey, this was awesome. And like, hey, I can make like three minutes of the day was entertaining because of something I produced. Like I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. So yeah, it, it was never, it, it was a snowball for sure. Like things kind of kept going crazier and crazier. And I just capitalized. I think uh, you mentioned something very important is that uh, for most people finding what you know you do well regardless of what that might look like yeah. and going all the way for that then I think uh, maybe that's something that you can advise the people out there because uh, I know a lot of people either I don't I can't tell if anybody out there is also inspired to be a competitive eater just like you but course, yeah. I definitely know in your and you have about 14 million people on your YouTube <laughs> it's kind of crazy yeah. that you know, what would you advise people who are just starting out as, you know, in terms of social media? Because the important thing is not everybody's kind of uh, set to be the focal point of uh, your all eyes on me sure. when you're broadcasting. Uh, and sometimes people are not ready for that kind of celebrity or that tension. Um, can you kind of advise people, you know, when you were starting out into what you learned throughout your career is uh, how you coped with it or worked on it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, first off, I'll start by saying yeah, I, I started a long time ago. YouTube and social media space was a, I, I pity anybody who's trying now. I mean, it's just so much, so many people getting into it. it it's the landscape is totally different. So um, what I started in is definitely not necessarily pertinent to what's going on in the current, but, you know, roughly the same. I mean, um, yeah, just go for it. Have fun with it for the first part, because I mean, I, I think roughly what you taught on is like, you know, you touched on a second ago is like, figuring out what you're good at and stuff and what you like to do and stuff. But I mean, there was a quote, I completely blanking on it, but it had something due to the nature of like, if you like doing something really think before you want to make it a career, because once you make it a career, it's no longer going to be fun anymore. You have to, you have to be willing to take the thing that you love doing and no longer really love it as, as much as you used to, you know? So it's like playing guitar. Like I like I love playing guitar and stuff, but if I had to like practice riffs and spend hours and hours just going over chord progressions and be like, like it wouldn't be fun anymore. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, that's why I say just just go for it, just give it a shot. You know, find a concept, and you can even you know copy some other people and just like just try to make it your own a bit. But just see if you like it, you know, and um, see if you wake up excited every day to do it. See if um you know things are getting better for you. You feel like you're actually progressing as things go on. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and I, I think also one thing that came to mind is like being ready for the celebrity of it. Um, I see a lot of people fall into that pitfall of like negative comments and like things going bad and drama. Like I've never had an issue with that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just the way my head works, but I, I think, I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was focused on competitive eating. I wasn't, I, I, I put a lot of work into the YouTube stuff, but I was focused on the contest. So I could care less if the crowd booed me to oblivion. If I walked away with the trophy, it doesn't matter what you said, you know? <laughs> so I, I kind of had this like absolute value to a lot of things. And um, I wasn't so focused on like, did people think I look dumb on camera? I, it was like, Hey, I did something amazing and I'm happy with it and posting it. So, so yeah, I think, you know, staying focused, not caring too much about what people think about you learning from your audience, uh, just do you just do you at the end of the day just find something you love to do and do it regardless of what people think i like that um good nuggets for anybody listening out there making sure if you're gonna do this you better love it because you're gonna do a lot of it and, um, <laughs> and to cut the noise uh, outside opinions and focus on why you love what you're doing uh, i mean speaking of how i you love do what you're doing can you remember how many competitions you have entered and and challenges you've done on on uh, YouTube because you must love it enough to have done all these things. Uh, can you recall a rough number? Has it been a couple hundred now? Let me, uh, like, let me uh, 
I did this research beforehand because I didn't know the number off the top of my head. Let me just add a document here. Here we go. It's only climbing, Matt. It's only it's a, climbing. It, it, it's never going to go down for sure. No, I mean, um, so a uh, number, actually, I didn't look up YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I forget how many videos I have. Okay, so I've got 385 videos now on, um, on YouTube, which isn't crazy compared to a lot of people. Some people are pumping that. They do that in a year. <laughs> but um, no, so I mean, YouTube challenges, I'd assume somewhere in that middle 300s, which is crazy to think about. But, um, you know, I, I added up the contest. So I actually did over 103, uh, 103 events in total, six qualifiers, 92 contests, um, a couple exhibitions, uh, challenges, it, it all muddy water and stuff. But I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I, I've been around the block. I've done a bunch of things. And uh, yeah, I don't, you know, it's weird because I do get that fatigue with a lot of stuff that I'm doing. In, in the kitchen like i always got to do something a little bit different a little bit better every time but that's part of the fun of it and that that's where like what you're saying like you're going to be doing a lot of it where do you find that drive where do you find that passion and it hurts sometimes just trying to figure out how you make eating food in my case eating food interesting or different you know it's like you can't reinvent the way you every time with it so um no i mean i've it's man i just i, I guess the best way to look at it is like uh well, the way I look at it, you know, with social media stuff is like, I have an awesome opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how difficult it is for me to come up with a video idea, no matter how hard the competition is pushing me at a contest, no matter um, like, oh, I got to like, I don't feel like filming today, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, you know, I've got an awesome opportunity that my, my audience has allowed me to do this. You know, they watch my content, they, they, they subscribe, they tune in and stuff. And um, I'd be an idiot if I was anything but ungrateful. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so you know is that a mind trick yes <laughs> I, I, I mean it, it's true it's true yeah. but like like, like if you, you find that thing that reminds you of like you know you know what it is that you should be grateful for happy about and stuff and just um just 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 iron that in your head steel cage it and um yeah because you know like you said you know it's not always easy but you gotta yeah. you, you persevere you you push forward yeah um like finishing homework you don't want to do it but you got to do it you know <laughs> <laughs> there's the analogy for you students right there you know you, you got to finish it or you want to get that fat f so yep yep just, um one of our uh viewers her name's helen lukey she, uh she says she's a big fan of your youtube channel so which is the which of the eating challenges that you have done on youtube or competitively was the most fun or maybe the most difficult for you Ooh, or okay. if, from what you can remember maybe the okay. recent yeah Hmm. I mean, I, I got a, I got a kind of good answer for one for both of those. Uh, it's an OG. It was my original viral video, the Michael Phelps diet challenge back in the day, uh, 12,000 calorie pizza sandwich, the, the whole nine yards. Um, it was one of my most difficult challenges because at the time I was still, I, I was getting somewhere, but I was still like relatively new into the competitive eating. So my capacity wasn't the best. I wasn't as, as in shape and everything. So I had to push really hard to finish that. Like I was sweating. It was like, oh my God, this is a lot of food. Um, but I was able to do that partially because it was also the most fun. You know, I was like, hey, like Michael Phelps, this epic legendary Olympian. Like, you know, and I look up to guys like that, you know, that, that push through, that mm -hmm. do amazing things. So I was like, I'm mimicking his meal. It's this big assortment of food. This is super cool, you know, it, you know, compared to like just not not putting down the hot dog contest but eating a bunch of hot dogs over and over for 10 minutes it, it's boring you know compared to a big spread and mimicking you know a legend or something so yeah i mean it's tough because i always try to do stuff that's fun um like, well, let's, like, let's, let's let's say uh let's push it this way because okay. of because of the eating um that's what most people only see because what we really want to hear is behind the scenes how much preparation that goes into it because you do uh, in other interviews I read that you don't suggest everybody do this. It's not really you know safe if you don't plan to do this well and prepare in advance because uh, it can be dangerous to sure. the body. Yeah. So what kind of preparation goes into you know your training? Uh, do you really research you know textures of food, calories intake, how you're feeling, how your body's responding to eating? I know you have a regimen post competition that I read was pretty interesting of the protein shakes and the vitamins. So sure. yeah, let us know what goes into Matt's, Matthew Stoney's head when he's preparing for these things. I mean, 
if I could put it in as brief a statement, I'll go into it. But <laughs> brief a statement, just be smart. <laughs> just be smart about it. Because like, again, just like the correlation I did or the body bones, like you could go to the gym and push your limits every single time, strain all your muscles, blow your lungs out, just like have a headache. Like you could do that if you want to. You're not going far if you're going to do that every single time. So, you know, my career and, you know, when I started, like, you know, when I started out of high school into college, like I was, I was big into math and sciences. So I was doing a lot of sciences, biology, chemistry, anatomy and stuff. And also I was taking a couple of nutrition courses at Michigan. They offered it. So I was learning a little bit of like what I'm doing to myself. My guy, this is what happens when you put a bunch of salt in your body. Oh, that's a little rough, you know, like, and, um, and uh, yeah, fun fact, actually, salt's the worst enemy. People think it's like the calories or something. I mean, it's not, the calories aren't fun, but the salt is the worst because your body just can't, calories you know like your body can just like hold salt just it does what it wants to do you just blow up you're dehydrated so but um yeah be smart about it like be tactical you know know your limits but also push them and um you know always it's like in the youtube space too you're like creators burning out and stuff and um you know, that's because they took it a little bit too far like i'm i'm constantly mini burnout you know it's like oh man, but like never to the point where i'm like i'm done with this type of thing so just be smart with it, you know, figure out what your limits are, push your limits. Cause, um, yeah, if you go too hard, you know, there can be issues with, you know, you know, choking, you know, it's just like things getting stuck. So experiment with, you know, how much do I need to bite the food? How much water do I need to drink to get this food down and, um, experiment and learn it's the whole process. I think, um, uh, compared to your contemporaries and you, you speak on not producing as many videos as such more other people but what i like about is the quality of your content uh so it's not so much the quantity because um you do a lot of cooking in your videos and uh i want to know uh did were you always cooking did you, did you kind of like working in the kitchen or did it come with these challenges because some of the food you make i'm like eh, that looks pretty good i would buy that you know <laughs> um okay I always find it funny when people mention anything like this because I do not consider myself in any any instance a chef, a cook, or anything whatsoever. Like a lot of times when I go into the kitchen, and and I it's part of the formula. I think it's part of the fun too. Is like I don't know what I'm doing. Like let's just pour a bunch of cheese and this this this. And fortunately, since it's a video, um, the audience doesn't have to taste it. So it could taste as bad. <laughs> it could be too salty, too bland. And I can get away with that as long as it looks good. So I'm, I've become, I'll say, uh, I've become a seasoned expert, whatever you want to call it. I've become seasoned at making stuff look good. Uh, taste good, chef and all stuff. I wouldn't even consider myself <laughs> to be one, but um, yeah. Food, food stylist is your future. I think That's after eating. I like that. I from now on, I like that food stylist. Your food stylist, you know, photography, make it all glistening. Uh, I'm looking forward to your future career in that. Um, I mean, definitely with you know near over a decade of competitions and you know content creation, you know, um, you've mentioned certain things that inspired you to keep going. Basically, loving what you do. But um, are there other things that have inspired you to push forward. Uh, I know a lot of uh, your content creation, you take from uh, pop culture, uh, from, you know, your life traveling. Um, really, what inspires you to uh, at least can, right now, you know, what, you're 29 right now, you know, yeah. you're still young, you know, there's so much more that's, you know, in store for you, but what pushes you to keep going, you know? Ooh. <clears throat> it, that's a... To me, that's like a, that's like a, that's like a rabbit hole. You're, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I know. And, and I'm sure for everybody, you know, it's like because somebody asked me, like, what do you think about in the middle of a contest to keep motivating yourself? I'm just like any and everything that whatever comes to mind that's gonna like push me forward, you know, because it's never gonna be the same thing, you know. If you're just like, oh, just tell yourself, remind yourself, just do it every single time, you can get bored of that. You gotta, like, I don't know, but uh, no, I mean, like, like definitely one of the, I pull, I, I try to pull inspiration, not not actually just trying to pull inspiration but you know you you stumble across people who do amazing things um and you go down these rabbit holes like i was like watching a bunch of chess and magnus carlson documentaries and it's like he can remember everything like oh my god this guy's like out of this world he's doing great so i was like man i want to be i can't be like that but like you know be like him of this or like 
even like um there's like dude on harry mac on youtube he's like dude's like there's like freestyles that like just nobody else could possibly do like what does freestyles have to do with competitive eating nothing but he's doing something crazy good mm. and i want to do something crazy good or you know like 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 k-pop videos the production value the editing mm. the camera angles the little movements the transitions just just i like learning things i like being inspired by things i find people I think I find things fascinating. So just like, just, just like finding inspiration and just picking out little things here and there is, uh, it's part of, I think of just my overall makeup of who I am and stuff. But, um, I, I think it's critical because you can't, like we're talking earlier, doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's very hard to do that. You got to find new, new uh, motivations, Frida. Like recently I just got, I got all these Pokemon cards in the back, I like Pokemon <laughs> cards now. So I'm like, Hey, like celebrate and open some Pokemon cards on stream. So whatever works, whatever works. I, I love that you're a, uh, you're a man of culture, uh, of inspiration, um, and that you find correlation with other people or, or movements in the world that have nothing to do with you, where you're like, you know what? I like that. That's going to mm -hmm. drive me forward in my life. So that's good to know that another thing, you know, find inspiration everywhere, everywhere, you know, um, we have another question by one of our guests. So, uh, anonymous, whoever you are, uh, <laughs> You just collaborated with Guga from Sous Vide Everything. I love you both. Uh, love both of you so that, with that collaboration, Chef Kiss. What do you do? You have a favorite person you collaborate with up to this point, or do you have a dream person you wish you could collaborate with? Ooh, ooh. Well, I'll preface by saying this: before this year, and then this is part of the expansion thing. I like the growing mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Like before this year, I've done one collaboration my entire. <laughs> For the most part, I did it with Mike Chen um, at, a, at a, I think it was oh, a dump, dumping yeah. place in Milpitas. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then this year, I've been flying all over the place. I think I've done, I probably by the end of the year, I just got back from Houston for the collab with another guy. So I've been trying to branch out and it's been an awesome time. You know, like everybody that I've met so far has been absolutely like, like great, you know, like great people, like Google especially. He was so accommodating. We came out, hung out at his place. He cooked this amazing steak for me. So, um, Man, I, that's tough. I mean, I definitely give Guga a nod for one of the best collabs just because of, like, he brought a whole bunch of people out, made an event out of it. He cooked the $14,000 chunk of meat for me. Like, that, everything about that was just epic. It was crazy. So, uh, Guga is definitely one of my best collabs. But, I mean, looking forward, I mean, I've got a few collabs with really, some really cool people we're working on right now, which, you know, like, again, would be awesome if they you know, come to fruit and stuff. But like, if you're talking about like shooting for the moon type of stuff, mm -hmm. like Gordon Ramsay <laughs> doing a, eating like some of his like uh beef Wellington or something in a competition or like, or like, like another guy that I, I kind of was talking about, like, like Tony Hawk. Like I have, I have absolutely nothing. I don't know what I'd do with Tony Hawk, but just like guys like that, I just find it cool. He's 50 years old, still skating, still kicking ass. He's on social now doing crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, one that makes sense, Gordon Ramsay. That'd be fun. Um, definitely, I would like to see the Tony Hawk. So <laughs> anybody knows the skater Tony Hawk and uh, does reach out, uh, push it, push it towards Matt. Yep, yep. Um. So definitely, you know, you're not lacking in inspiration and um, pushing you to what you do. But, um, you know, I know in this uh, world, especially in the social media world, and you know, putting yourself out there, a lot of people still. Uh, you know, have misconceptions about, you know, competitive mm -hmm. eating um, and what, you know, people uh, in your circle do, you know, um, if with this moment, can you, would you like to just dispel, you know, all that kind of the connotations that they get wrong with competitive eating um, and just like, you know, speak on why it's uh, uh, important, fun uh, activity that doesn't just happen in America, but happens around the world, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you know, I, I like to look at, I like to be devil's advocate a lot. I like to mm -hmm. look at people's comments and kind of see what their perspective. So I'm not like a really hard, like, oh, this, they're, they're absolutely wrong for thinking this and stuff. I think one of the biggest things that, you know, just vying for competitive eating, the support of it, you know, people talk about like the overconsumption part of it. You know, we're, we are eating a lot of food um, where, you know, people in the world aren't so fortunate and don't have this stuff. And like I said, you know, that's a very true statement, realistic, but, you know, any and everything, whether it's making a movie, um, having a bunch of servers running 
for Google, you know, or for YouTube videos and stuff. Like everything is resources and stuff. And, you know, especially in the competitive eating world, uh, we try to do things with charity. A lot of sponsors donate to food banks mm-hmm. or local charities and stuff because, you know, uh, you know that over. So like we try to, you know, push back and not like, not like just for that reason, but um, I, I think that's one of the biggest things, you know, we're just, we're out here just trying to have fun, um, you know, do something that's entertaining people. And, um, you know, hopefully at some point, you know, I, I've been trying to figure out ways to help more with charity and stuff. It, it's, it's not as easy <laughs> as, as it might seem and stuff, but um, I think that's one of the misconceptions. Yeah. It's just like the overconsumption part of it. Like we're, we're doing our best, you know, as with everybody else, but um. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing I think, you know, I think people are privy to nowadays is like people being skinny and competitive eaters. It has to happen. You can't be a big dude and competitive eat. And the, the the best way to paint a picture is like, if you have like a lot of fat around your stomach area, it makes it more painful and hard for your mm-hmm. stomach to expand. So just being as lean as possible is, uh, and you got to be healthy too. You know, it's, this is not a, the healthiest thing. No sport is the healthy thing in the world. You know, tennis players get tennis elbow, football players, you know, with all the, the head butts and stuff. But um, yeah, we just do, we, we're, we're doing something extreme, but we're doing the best job to take care of our bodies at the same time. Yes, the body is not in, invincible. So it's finite. So I know you train a lot for this. So trust me. Yeah, I, I was like, you know, I looked back into the videos. I'm like, this kid is so skinny. How? But it makes sense. Um, I got a little bit of tire around my waist. So yeah, it hurts every time I have lunch. So <laughs> I get it. I get it, guys. I get it. Get, get into the training. Get serious. <laughs> no, th- thanks, coach. Thanks. Um, oh, there, there, there's a club. I, it wouldn't even have to be like a collab. I could do my own normal video, but that'd be a dream. If I can have Arnold Schwarzenegger yelling at me to keep eating or something, that would be that would be so epic. Governor, Terminator, please uh, hit up, hit up my boy right here. MC uh, MC in a event of mine. That would be that would be I'd be done. I'd be like I, I closing the book on this chapter of my life. Moving on. <laughs> Dream big. Yeah. Um. So we have a question. Another question. Uh, Giles Lee, uh, my boy Giles Lee from Boston. Uh, oh. he he writes for like it's this. Uh, his son, uh, Maxwell, seven years old, wants to know why Matt wears a headband all the time and what are the hardest and easiest foods to eat fast? Ooh, okay. Um, headband, it's practical, it makes sense. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean this to be a thing. I used to have much longer hair. I got, I, ever, ever since I hit middle school, for whatever reason, I just liked having long hair. So as, um, I didn't always rock the headband um, at some contest, but it's gotta get hairs falling in your face and it's just like ah it's just like uh and like in hair like I, there's a guy with his crazy legs conti og competitive eaters like dreadlocks and just leaves them down and he's like every once in a while like i bite the tip off my dread i'm like oh, that's, that's disgusting so now the headband is just a practical thing like when i hit the gym i'm always rocking it um when i'm eating food i'm all and it's just it's easy now like even when i'm just working by the computer i <laughs> wear the headband so it's, that was it. That was a practical thing. It kind of became this thing where it's like, oh, you guy wears the headband and stuff. But um, yeah, so that and um, on the topic of what was it? It was easiest oh, foods to eat fast. Yeah. Or uh, it's saying hardest or easiest. Foods hardest and fast. easiest. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say pound for pound the hardest. Uh, we did a Halloween co- candy contest last year for Halloween and eating candy corn and snickers and kit kats is so hard it's just it's crunchy it's just so sweet it, it, it's it's a nightmare the it, it was halloween candy was hard um easiest that's a tough one you know i gotta shout out to boston my, I have my east coast I'm from boston and stuff shout out to regina's pizza north end best pizza um pizza contest i've always really wanted to do a really good pizza contest because i can feel like i could destroy pizza um, unfortunately haven't been to a really good pizza contest yet, but, um, pizza's up there. I think I could destroy a pizza real fast. Um, another shout out to uh, one of the events that had, hasn't happened a couple of years because of COVID, but, um, uh, daily foods, gyoza, Japanese dumplings, those like, pop, 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 pop. I think I ate like 370 of those things in 10 minutes, like gyoza just go down like nothing. I love gyoza too, but 300 of those, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There you have I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you for this much. The first, the first five or 10 were the best. So you're not missing too much. <laughs> um, you know, we're talking about, you know, uh, the business of Matt Stoney and, uh, you know, have you been approached 
by a lot of brands to uh, for sponsorships, um, you know, advertising, you know, and do you have a team that helps you with all that? Because I'm sure you don't want to get bombarded in your DMs every few seconds of your life, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's, for me, the business side of it is harder than eating 60 hot dogs. Like I've, I've been, that's something I've been woefully trying to figure out the past couple of years, especially doing collabs with guys like Guga, you know, he's got a compound, he's got a whole team of people helping. Like right now it's just myself, my girlfriend and my brother, Morgan, he helps out a bit and stuff. And we just got another video edit, uh, video videographer to help out and stuff. But you know, right now I'm doing a lot of the editing still, the creative and stuff. And it's tough, you know, you, once it gets to a certain point, you start needing some help and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we've managed up until this point to keep it pretty small, but uh, we're looking to scale up for sure in the near future. Like a true businessman right there. <laughs> <laughs> There's an IPO in the future for this. So, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't be, you know, I would be remiss to not say, what were some of your favorite places to eat in San Jose? You know, because, you know, you, you're, you're from here in the South Bay at a point in the Bay Area. You know, I, I just won't leave it just to the San Jose, maybe in the Bay Area. But, you know, what are your favorite places to eat for, you know, comfort, uh, you know, and just enjoyment? Okay. I mean, you cannot have a Bay Area favorite food place type of thing, uh, conversation without starting with the It's It. The starting with the It's It, San Francisco treat, the original, is, uh, you got to give a shout out to the It's It. No, uh, no ice cream sandwich like it. But um, no, I mean, I, got, I had a favorite fall place um, that um, I actually have still haven't worked on the video. I got to do it. But I went to give them a shout out in the video because they're amazing. They're um, off of Tully, uh, Fuff Wong. Over, mm -hmm. It's kind of near Easter's and stuff. They make the best, fuff, best spring rolls by far. So um, that, that's that been a regular place. Uh, Boiling Point is it, kind of a chain, but make great hot pot. I, I love it. I did a video with Alexander Steakhouse. Again, he had like an upscale steakhouse as always. The place whenever I think. Like probably like three or four times when I hit million subscriber milestones, we went to Alexander's, you know, so <laughs> no, I mean, you know, like we talked at the top, you know, Vegas is kind of like a food town, you know, there's a lot of, that's one of the reasons why I moved out here is, you know, a lot, a lot of different food options, but, you know, in the Bay, you know, what specialties, like, especially like Vietnamese cuisine and stuff and Chinese cuisine mm -hmm. that it's like, it doesn't, Vegas doesn't hold a candle to the Bay in that regards yet, at least that we found. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's why, you know, it was, it was a tough decision to move up to Vegas and food and the culture was definitely one of those. <laughs> I love you, Vegas, but you heard it first right here. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, we have a question by Stephen Wynn. Uh, he goes, hi, Matt. It's Dark Snow One. Oh, let's Twitch. go. Okay. Okay, sweet. What's up, dude? As one of your subscribers, I got a question for you. Any contest you're looking forward to in 2022? Also, stay awesome and well. Hello from San Jose, California and grad school. <laughs> Yo, shout, yeah, Dark Snows, he's actually, he, 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 he was all, he's always on point with like the boba place. And I didn't, I didn't give a shout to San Jose boba either. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Pico and stuff. They got, they do some amazing stuff there. But um, yeah, that's, that's a question that I can't even answer for the most part because there's no contest mm -hmm. been announced for 2022. Um, and I'd imagine like the Nathan's contest would come back, but like I said, like with the, the, the daily food gyoza competition, uh, smoked poutine world poutine eating championship in Toronto, uh, Nico Nikos has been gone for like a lot of the really big, a, a lot of the big events outside of Nathan's didn't come back in the past couple of years. The events that happened were more of like the newer events or smaller events. Um, so that's a tough one. You know, I, I, I didn't do, I did popcorn at the, at the start of the year, but that was it. You know, it's been a pretty, uh, dry year so I mean I'd love to get back on the circuit um the question is what what's what's going to be there you know waiting oh, yeah. to, what, what, what food what cuisine and stuff but I mean obviously you know if Nathan's happens this year and they give the eaters you know a decent heads up so we can train and stuff I'd love to be there and um but yeah I don't know we'll we'll, we'll see um definitely leads into you know when we're talking about the future um I know you've spoken that, you know, you really don't, you know, bother to listen to the comments, but <laughs> walking out in, in the world, knowing that you are a type of celebrity, but have you had people just randomly challenge you, <laughs> you know, like, like some samurai guns, gunslinger things. Like okay. Like a Western or something. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Uh, you're like, well, I'm just trying to live my life here, buddy. 
<laughs> I've never had that happen. And thank God it's never happened. Cause that'd be a little awkward. <laughs> like here's a burrito. Let's go. I'm gonna, I'd just be like, no, I'm not on the clock right now, man. I, I'm, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, that's never happened particularly, but, um, he yeah, actually, uh, just, uh, last week. Yeah. A week ago, actually, exactly. Um, held an event at Mandalay Bay for um, some Pokeballs that we're working on right now. And it was awesome. It was the first real meet and greet that I've ever done. Again, kind of like the collabs before this year, like haven't really done too much. Um, but like, like with Dark Snows with Twitch, I'm trying to interact with my audience more get out there a bit more. And it's always awesome. And it's incredible, um, you know, just the amount of people that watch the content. It's different seeing a number on a YouTube video and statistics. And like you got this many hours per month and, you know, versus meeting your audience in person, you know, shaking their hand fist bump whatever and what's up man thanks for coming out nice to meet you what's your favorite video or what well, you know what, what was your first video so um it's, it's always awesome to interact and get a feel for the audience that's watching me because at the end of the day like i've always like i kind of said before it's like they're the reason why i can do what i do i got absolutely you know nothing but respect and um thanks you know mm -hmm. for that you show that appreciation well so yeah. it's it keeps you sane i'm sure you know um we're nearing the end. I just want to know what's the, you know, what's the future beyond competitions? Uh, I mean, I'm probably, uh, haven't thought about this, but have you, have you traveled outside the country to compete and, or do, uh, content? Um, cause I, I don't re recall any of that. Have you done that before? Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Short answer is yes. It hasn't okay. been a long, so I was in, um, it was like the, Actually, yeah, that's kind of crazy. It was actually like the first year I started this um, uh, CP, CP um, Foods. They were doing an event in a bunch of, um, uh, in Asia and stuff. And uh, they flew me out to Singapore to eat one I was like, oh my God. And then they flew me out to Bangkok. I'm like, oh my God. Was, you know, <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah, there's a few other ones that popped up here and there. But um, on that note, like as soon as, uh, as, as soon as it's safe to travel and restrictions get lifted and stuff, uh, love Japan. I, we got to go back to this is actually a really big competitive it's not it's, mm -hmm. it's not competitive eating it's um it's more marathon eating it would be the word i call it the big eaters uh, food fighting and sort of stuff Ugi is what they call it but um yeah no they got a lot of food challenges um it, it love the culture and everything the food's amazing and so as soon you know like like i was saying for eight nine years i was just making videos in my kitchen Part of that was because it's easy and convenient. Part of it was calculated because I didn't want to just jump to all the biggest and greatest things. Like I want to just, that's coming up, coming soon, you know? And uh, that that's, you know, how much longer can I do this? Social media is such a weird place. You can't, you know, your tenure here is not a long time and stuff. So I'm blessed with the fact that I can actually have done this for a decade now, but, you know, I got to keep it interesting. So travel vlogs, food challenges in other countries, collaborations like we've done this year, um epic stuff man i mean it's it's a lot of work but i mean that's 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 what i'm here to do so you got the wait. yeah you got the charisma you got the energy uh, uh, i think uh beyond the competitive side you'll you're gonna be fine and we look forward to you know seeing more from that um you know it's, we're just gonna close out right now but do you have any shout outs maybe words of encouragement again to folks out there who you know they have a passion uh, or they're, they're grasping for something that not many people understand maybe something that will help them you know push them to just trying it out and not you know quitting on it you you mentioned some tips but how yeah. about you know something more for the folks out there yeah more more general or kind of i mean <clears throat> first off i'd say especially in today's day and age and maybe if you're growing up with the internet and stuff it's not so apparent but compared to the past and it's just going to get more and more is mm -hmm. you can do anything and make a career out of it for the most part you can like, like I was just talking with a guy who's a YouTuber who does dentists, like he's a dentist, but now he just does like dentist content, like weird, like golden toothpaste or, you know, like it's like, and, and like, um, you know, like Pokemon streamers are, they're blowing up right now and, and playing video games. Like five years ago, gaming was still a little thing. Now you millions and millions of followers all over the place. So, you know, like in today's day and age, it, it's, it's more than ever a perfect time to capitalize on, you know, your passions, your creativity, whatever you want to do, whatever it might be. Um, so go for it, you know, just go for it. It'll be uncomfortable. And sometimes that's going to happen across the board, but just think about it. Like, just think like, I always try to compare it to athletics. It's like, if you're in a race with a bunch of people, the person who's going to win is the one who decides they're going to 
push harder and go further and stuff. So like when, it, when the going gets tough, you just got to push through it and just look at it like a competition, but you know, at the same time, you know, like I said, be smart with it. You know, <laughs> like we said, the video game, like I'm, I'm guilty of playing too many video games and stuff. So you have that smart calculated approach to it, but dude, just, just, just be you be the best version of yourself you could possibly be and just try hard. There you have it, everybody. Um, Matt, uh, this has been a great, uh, rare opportunity to talk to you. Um, I'm looking forward to much more of your content, but if you're back in the South Bay, uh, let me take you out sometime. I, you know, your place of choice and a normal portion too. So we'll, <laughs> we'll take care of that for sure. Definitely. definitely. I, I still got family in the Bay, so I, I come out pretty frequently. It's, it's a short trip from Vegas. So, um, yeah, no, uh, thanks for having me. You know, this was awesome. It was, it's again, an interesting opportunity to come and <laughs> do an interview for Santa Clara library, but, um, no, it's, it's, you know, it's fun. Nice shout back to where I was, gr I grew up, lived and stuff. And, um, yeah, always good to, uh, always good to do stuff like this. All right, we're looking forward to the future book where whenever that happens. Whenever that sure. happens, yes, for <laughs> sure. All right, everybody, everybody tuning in and tuning in later. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Please reach out to Matt, check out his stuff, and always support your libraries. And we'll see you next time. Peace.